All right, let's have some more practice with these and, or, and not rules. I'll go through these fairly quickly. Example one, six-sided die is rolled and a coin is tossed. What's the probability that the die shows an even number and the coin comes up tails? Is this an and or an or situation? You should be able to figure out this is an and situation. One thing that has to happen is the die showing an even number. The other thing is that the coin comes up heads and you're interested in both of those things happening, A and B. So given that you're interested in both of those, then you need they need to be not disjoint. Well, can they both happen? Yeah. The die can do one thing, the coin can do another thing. They can both happen the way this question is phrased. So they're not disjoint. Are they independent? Yes, they are, because the probability of the die doing a certain thing does not depend in any way on what happens with the coin or vice versa. So we can use the simplified uh, special case multiplication rule that we're going to use in this class. So that works. So the probability of event A happening is, you know, you've got this two, four, six, you've got three possibilities there. And, and that's out of six possibilities, so three out of six is 0.5. Easy peasy. The probability of event B happening is 0.5 also. Also not terribly difficult. So A times B is 0.25, and that's the probability of the die coming up uh, an even number and the coin coming up heads, as long as it's a fair die and a fair coin, etc. So what's the probability of that not happening? If we just take the complement, which is easy to do, just the answer was 0.25 to the previous example. 1 minus 0.25 is 0.75. That's easy to figure out. But what's harder to figure out is what did we just describe? 0.75 is the probability of what? Try and think, try and phrase that in words to yourself. That's the probability of what? If you said something like um, the die not coming up, up even and the uh, coin not coming up heads, um, then that's not actually technically correct here. That's not going to work. So what is the probability that we're actually talking about? Well, the probability that's described by 0.75 is the probability of anything other than what example one said, the previous screen, anything other than the die showing an even number and the coin check coming up heads. So it could be that the die is even in the coin or heads and the die is odd in the coin or heads or the die is odd and the coin is tails. So either of those satisfy this. But just flipping around the words doesn't always work. You really have to think through what is actually being applied by that not. So here's another example. Jackie orders a mystery t-shirt. Um, a half of those shirts are web comics. A, a quarter are memes and a quarter are pure sarcasm. And it's randomly selected which one you're going to get. There are five separate colors. And there's the same number of each of the colors for each of the different kinds of memes. So what I'm telling you with that is that they're, that, uh, sorry, that, the topic of the shirt, memes, sarcasm, web comics, is totally independent of the color of the shirt, of the different five. So what's the probability that she will receive a pure sarcasm shirt? Is this an and or an or situation? This is and, or sorry, this is and, blue and sarcasm. So in, what's the probability of both of those things happening, the A and B? And is this independent? Are those two things independent? Well, I took some pains in the example to describe things being independent. The probability of getting a certain topic of shirt is not associated in any way, doesn't affect, isn't affected by the probability of getting a certain color of shirt. So yeah, we can use the special multiplication rule and just multiply the probabilities. So the probability of getting, um, you don't need to know the pure numbers as long as you know the proportions of the fractions. The probability of getting a sarcasm shirt is one fourth. You probably didn't need all this extra stuff to figure that out. I just told you it's one fourth. And the probability of getting blue is going to be one one in five. This is excessively complicated, also. 
So that's 0 0.2. 0 0.25 sarcasm, 0.2 for the blue. And so the total probability is 0 0.05 of getting a blue sarcasm shirt. So what's the probability that she won't receive a blue sarcasm shirt? So not blue sarcasm shirt. Of course, that can be any color other than blue if it's still sarcastic, or any topic other than sarcasm if it's still blue, or anything that's not blue and not sarcastic. So there's a lot of possibilities there. So if the probability of what she wants is 0.05, then the probability of what she doesn't want is 0.95. Now let's run through an example where I show you how the general addition rule works. Not that you need to know this necessarily. It, it might be useful for some people. It might be interesting. We're kind of going to use Venn diagrams. Let's, su let's suggest that there are two probabilities with this D20, this 20-sided die. Event A is that you roll a number higher than 14 on a roll. And event B is you roll an odd number on that roll. Those two things are not disjoint because even if it's a single roll, as I've said it, I'm going to say that it, that's the case, you can have a number that is higher than 14 and that is odd. So the non-disjoint, are they independent? Actually, this could be tricky to think through, and I'll show you that they are in a minute. So let's list all the possibilities. These are all the numbers, 1 through 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I lined them up like this so it's easy to select evens and odds. Uh, so event A is an outcome greater than 14. So we use a Venn diagram. Usually they're circles, but you can make it the square thing. It's because we're just surrounding the total possible num the total possible outcomes that would satisfy this. So this is event A. These are the numbers higher than 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There are six of them. So the probability of A happening, just in isolation, is 0.3, 6 out of 20. So that's easy. The probability of event B happening, those are all the odd numbers. They are half. There are half odd numbers and half even numbers on a 20-sided die. Um, you can't just assume that, though, because if they had started with 0 and it was a 21-sided die, then it would get more confusing. Anyway, there's half. So 10 out of 20, that probability of B happening is 0.5. So let's talk about the intersection of A and B. Intersection usually means and. There are only three things that satisfy that. There are only three outcomes that satisfy both A and B. And that's 15, 17, and 19. Those are the numbers that are both higher than 14 and odd. Three possibilities. So if you want to figure out if these things are independent, we can actually just use we can do brute force logic to figure out what the probability is. Since there are three ways that A and B together can happen, then the probability of that must be 3 out of 20, or 15. So we can show that the special multiplication rule works because we already figured out the probability of A, of being 0.3, of B, 0.5. If you multiply those, you get the same answer, 0.15. So actually, these two things are independent of each other. That's the definition of independent. You can use that rule to define independence. If this works, as long as you can figure out the probabilities another way, which is sometimes not possible, then you've proven independence. So that's nice. Let's talk about addition. So the or rule, the, the, the addition rule. Either a, event A or event B happens. There's event A. There's event B. A or B, there are actually 13 ways either A or B happen, right? All these things... Here, this L-shaped thing, there are 13 of those. So the answer, the correct answer for A or B must equal 0.65, which is 13 out of 20. So there's 13 ways out of 20 that can happen. So can we use the simple rule? Can we just say probability of A plus probability of B? No, because then, oh, sorry, that's wrong. You get 0.80. That's uh, my mistake. Let me just fix that. So can you just use the simple multiplication rule, A plus B? No, because you get 0.80. You get 0.3 plus 0.5 is 0.8. And that's the wrong answer. It's not 0.65. So the simple multiplication rule doesn't work because these things are not disjoint, because B and A can both happen. And so what happens with the special multiplication rule is you have to subtract out their intersection. And let me show you why. Now, when you work it out, it works. 0.3 plus 0.5, we saw 0.3 is the probability of A, 
point B is point 0.5. A and B both happening, the probability is point 0.15, as we figured out on a previous page, which is just this times this. So 0 0.3 plus 0.5 is 0.8, minus 0.15, you get 0.65 there, which is this. So general multiplication rule does work, but special multiplication rule does not work. And I'll show you, I'll try to show you graphically why. So there's event A. There's event B. Their overlap is like this, and you've got too many things. A includes 15, 17, and 19, and B includes 15, and 17, and 19. So if you just add those things together, you're adding the 15, and 17, and 19 into the probabilities twice. And that's wrong, because when we're saying the probability of A or B happening, there's no doubles there. It's just 15, 17, and 19 only appear once. So you subtract out A and B. 15, 17, and 19 are A and B, so you subtract those out. You subtract one of them out. So you're just left with one set of the a of the intersection numbers there. So you do a plus b, which would be 16 out of 20, and then you subtract out three of those because they're the overlap. Because there's you get double overlap, so minus three out of 20. So you end up with 13 out of 20. So you end up with sorry, you end up with the correct number. You get 13 out of 20.65. So as a final note, what happens with neither A nor B? What's that probability? Well, it's pretty easy. There's A, there's B, and we've already figured out everything else. So if we know that A or B is 0.65, then neither A nor B has to be one minus that. So it's these things here. 7 out of 20 is 0.35, and figuring it out this way works too. 1 minus 0.65 is 0.35.